So I think that we are live. And as you all can see, we have a guest today with us. Um, this is Doc Holliday. We call him Doc for short. Um, we've had him for a little over a year now. We adopted him from the Bay Area Shelter there in Bay Cliff. Um, great facility. I highly recommend it if you're looking for an addition to the family to go visit them. They are, they are the best. Um, so let's get talking about today's uh, installment is all about protecting yourself and your loved ones, namely your pets. So just a little bit of an update on you know some of the COVID trends that we're seeing. Houston is now, last I saw, fifth in the nation for positive cases. We went from 29th to fifth. So it'll be interesting to see you know what what's going on in the next couple of weeks. You know, when we see what the, uh, if we have any kind of a positive growth um, since um, all of the protesting and we have some large gatherings that have been happening. So um, one of the ones I always look at to really kind of tell me what's going on and where, you know, where we should be concerned is, you know, Texas Medical Center has a website and they track um, total ICU bed occupancy. And it's roughly been 16% or less of the total occupancy has been due to COVID. Um, so right now they are sitting at um, 1,166 beds are occupied. We are now moving into the yellow category from the green. Um, total normal ICU occupancy is 1,462. Um, so you can see we're only about 300 um, beds away from being at total normal ICU occupancy. Now they put contingency plans in place, it looks like, and they can go up much higher than that if needed. But just to make sure that you're um, being aware that we don't want to flood our hospitals and resources so that they can take care of us. Um, so just be, be smart, be safe, and take the precautions that you need to. So now, we're going to talk about what we can do to protect our, our, our pets, our loved ones, if something happens to us. Um, you know, normally, if obviously, if you've got a, a loved one or spouse that lives with you, they're going to take care of your animal for you. But what happens if that's not the case? Um, there is a cool instrument that we have in estate planning called an animal trust. And that is a way that you can take care of your animals, not only when you pass away, but also if you're incapacitated. Um, he's, my, he's my sweet boy. Um, so what happens with uh, an animal trust? And you can do a couple different kinds of animal trusts. So you can either do one while you're living, go ahead and create your trust, and you would fund it with money and the purpose of the trust is to make sure that your animals are taken care of. Um, so you can also put property in there. So if you had a house that you rented out, you could actually title the house into the trust and the income generated from that asset would be used to take care of the animal. Um, so you would name a trustee that somebody is gonna manage the trust and they are the ones that control the money and they make sure that money is being spent on the care of your animal. And then you would have the beneficiary who is the person that actually is taking care of the animal. Now, you could have that be the same person um, if they're very trustworthy. If you aren't quite so sure about that, then you could actually have a professional trustee manage the money to give to the beneficiary for caring for the animal. That might be a good idea somebody that you really trust and you know they're gonna love your 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 baby um, and take care of them, but they may not be so great with money and managing money. Um, so you might want to make sure that somebody else is managing the money and they're getting to just do what they love and taking care of, care of your buddy. Um, and you can set up a trust either to take effect now while you're living, which is a good idea, especially with you know COVID and all the other fears that are going around. Um, 
you might want to make sure that you have something. So if something happens to you and you are incapacitated, you want to make sure that somebody's taking care of your, your animals and that you know they have the money to do so. Not everybody's gonna be willing to you know, fork out money to take care of an animal that's not theirs. So you wanna make sure that they, they are able to do that. And you can do that with what we call an inter vivos trust, which is a trust that you create while you're alive and it becomes effective while you're alive. Then we have what we call a testamentary trust, which is one that you would put into your will so that upon your death, it's created by the executor of your estate. Um, and there's, you know, there's pros and cons, like I was saying for the, the living trust, he wants to go look out the window for squirrels, I think. So we may have some barking here in a minute, but um, so the living trust, the one that you can go ahead and create while you're alive. Obviously, if something happens to you and you're incapacitated, the animal's gonna be cared for. Also, you'd have to worry about it with a trust is created when you die, a testamentary trust, that there's gonna be a delay. So there's gonna be a time between the period when you pass to when you go, um, when your executor can get to court and actually get the authority to create a trust and actually get access to the, the money and property and everything that would fund that trust. So pros and cons, and it's something that you should, you know, Get with a lawyer that you trust that does estate planning that's familiar with these so that they can um, advise you on the best way to go. So there, there's two different ways that you can go. There's, you know, the, the official trust that you create. You can set out guidelines on feeding and care and you know, medical care, um, what's going to happen with the dog, you know. To you can set out all kinds of different parameters for, for the care of your animal when you do a full-blown trust instrument with an animal trust. Um, there's a little bit more informal way of doing it in your will, and that would just be um, basically saying, I leave $10,000 in trust for the care of your animal. You wanna make sure that you identify your, your pet um, so that people know who they're supposed to be taking care of. Um, these types of trusts, animal trusts, are also really, really useful when you have livestock. You have large animals, cows, horses, anything like that, that are going to be very, very expensive for somebody to take care of. And so these would be something that might be a really good thing for somebody that's got a ranch or a farm um, to put in place, especially while they're living so that they can make sure that the animals are cared for when they pass or if something happens to them. So um, let's see what else. So I'm often asked, how do you how do you fund a trust? Well, basically you have a trust instrument which will have a name. So for instance, if we created a animal trust for Doc here, we would say, you know, intervivos trust for Doc Lochelle. Um, now he's looking at me. And uh, just as long as they had the title, and then you would go to the bank and say, okay, I'm creating a trust bank account. You even get an EIN number from the IRS, and then you would put money into the trust account. Um, you could actually even leave uh, beneficiaries. So if you wanted to go and get a life insurance policy, that the beneficiary is a trust that's going to take care of your animals, that's allowed. You can also do you know, paid on death on your bank accounts to the trust that's going to take care of your animals. You can deed real property into the, the trust name and any income generated from that property would be used um, per the trust terms to take care of those animals. So it's a pretty cool little um, way to make sure that your animals are taken care of. Um, you know, you can, like I was saying, you can provide instructions on you know, grooming, toys, you know, food, all kinds of stuff that you can put in there to make sure that your 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 loved ones are are taken care of. So it's kind of an area that's often overlooked, um, but it's a very very important uh, topic that I think everybody needs to consider in their estate planning. And if that's something that you're 
wanting more information on, please feel free to reach out to me. You can reach me at uh, my website is www.boswelltexaslaw.com or you can email me at duana, D-U-A-N-A, -A, at boswelltexaslaw.com or you can give us a call at 832-919-6595 and I'd be happy to share any information on that and you know provide information on who you can talk to that knows knows about these things as well as answer your questions myself. So. I just want to say thank you guys for joining me. It's a beautiful Friday out there. I think I'm going to go and try to get some, some sun and vitamin D. And we'll see you guys next week. If there's any topics that you want to know something more about, then just reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer them Fridays at 1130 on Ask an Attorney Live. Thanks a lot for watching.